All right, all right. So uh, I'm up here. Pastor's not here again, guys, right? So um, today I got a little teaching prepared for you guys called Liquor Filled or Spirit Filled. Uh, I know it sounds kind of crazy, right? But judging by the main text, you could probably guess why uh, I came up with this, okay? So um, bear with me. I don't teach very much. I don't use the whiteboard very much, so I apologize if uh, there's, you know, some discrepancies in what I say it's on the board. Any mistakes, ask some charity with me, please. Um, so, yeah, um, so I, I, I started thinking about, I, I read this verse here. Let's go to Ephesians 5, 17 to 18. Ephesians 5, 17 to 18. Um, it says, be not uh, drunk of wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? That's, that's the part of it we all know. Um, but let's go ahead and look here at this second part here. Or, this, or rather, the first part. I think it all goes together. So verse 17. They're going to tend towards not understanding the will of God, and they're going to tend towards being excessive, right? And you've seen that when people get drunk. You're doing too much, right? Yeah, that's over the top. You're being excessive, right? That's wearing the excess. You may hear some of the modern churches saying that the excess is the amount of alcohol you drink, but no, the Bible's telling you when you get that stuff in you, you're going to act excessive, right? Just any drop of it is going to get you acting a little excessive there. Um, so, so I started thinking about this. Okay, so... If it's talking about this, then when did we first get the Holy Spirit? How did, how did we crack that bottle and start getting some of that, that Holy Spirit filling? How did we first do that? Well, we first cracked the bottle with what? The obedience of Christ. Um, so let's go ahead and look here at Romans 5. Romans 5, and on the other hand, get Matthew 3 and Titus 3. We're going to look around a bit. So uh, Romans 5 in one hand, Titus 3 in one hand. And Matthew 3, in the other hand. So uh, this is actually a, a, a verse that I use against works, um, verses I use against works all the time. But the Romans 5 is a new edition. Uh, so Romans 5, verse 19. Romans 5, verse 19. The Bible says, uh, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And we know by the context of that, of that passage that, that that one is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So then let's go here to Titus 3. Titus 3. Okay, so by the obedience of one. Well, well what is some of that obedience? Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Brother, it was by His works of righteousness. His works of righteousness, not our works. How do you prove this? Go to Matthew 3. Go to Matthew 3. Matthew 3, and we'll look here at verse... What do I have up there? 15. Matthew 3, 15. Right? So Jesus comes to... The Lord Jesus Christ comes to John the Baptist, right? And John the Baptist doesn't want to, doesn't want to baptize him. He's like, I need to get baptized of you. Right? But what does the Lord Jesus Christ tell him? The Lord Jesus Christ tells him, And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. Why? Watch this. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Jesus Christ, this was the work of righteousness. This was him being obedient to what the law required. Jesus Christ didn't just die to pay for all of the sins that we, that we committed, but he also lived a perfect and righteous life so he can impute that righteousness onto us, right? So by the obedience of Christ, and what happens next? What happens after he's obedient to this thing? Uh, then he suffered him, and verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, uh, in whom I am well pleased. You're gonna, you, you could find other verses in your Bible where it's going to tell you that being obedient as a servant is the only way to please your master. Right? So there's some interesting there, uh, more about the obedience. Okay, so Jesus Christ was, obe uh, was, was obedient, and then the Holy Spirit descends upon him. Well, what, uh, likewise, we have to obey the truth of the gospel. I'm not talking about like the Colts use it. Go to Galatians 3. The Colts use this by saying you have to be obedient to the gospel by following all of the rules. But the way the Bible uses that phrase, don't get caught up in the way the Colts use Bible terms because a lot of the time they're not using it the way the Bible uses it, brethren. You got to know the way the Bible uses it. The, the, every word is precious, brethren. And so you better believe the devil is going to come and he's going to tamper every word. He's going to muddy up every word, brethren. Galatians 3, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Right? So what was the truth? The truth is that you needed to get saved. Right? 
And so you obeyed that truth that you were a sinner and that you needed salvation and you got saved and you got the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. We go to Ephesians 1.13, right? One of the best verses there. But you, you could see there, right? At the moment of salvation, you got the Holy Spirit. Okay, we cracked the bottle. We cracked the bottle. Now let's start drinking. Let's get filled with the Holy Spirit today, right? Amen. But before we do, because of this verse here, I want to look at what a drunk is. I want to start by, by with a negative. I want to see what we're not supposed to be as a drunkard. So let's go to Deuteronomy 21, the first reference of that word de uh, drunkard. Let's, let's see what a drunkard looks like the first time he pops up in the Bible. Let's see what he's associated with. Let's see who he's, who he's obeying, who he's disobeying. Let's see what we could get from him, right? They say if you can't be used for something good, at least you can be used for a bad example, right? Amen. Hey, praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. Uh, so we're going to look here at Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 18. Uh, here we're going to be talking about the stubborn and rebellious son. Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, that when they have chastised him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gates of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. That's... That's pretty intense there, brother. And you see, you see that from overeating and overdrinking. That's, little, that's literally what they were doing. But, but what is the spiritual application for that? I mean, some of you, maybe you are overeating. And maybe you are overdrinking. I don't know. If that's hitting you, fine, take that. But, 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 but what else can we apply it to? Well, we can apply it to stubbornness, right? We can, I mean, uh, uh, stubbornness is as idolatry. Yeah. Woo! Rebellion as witchcraft. Whoa, that's intense. Okay, so what is stubbornness? Stubbornness is you thinking you know more than your parents. In this, in this one, right? That's good. Right? Right? That's what this person was doing here. He thought he knew more than the parents, right? And I understand some of you all, I don't have my parents. Well, don't worry. We're going to hit you in a second, okay? Rebellion. What is this? You think you know the will of the parents, of the father, but you don't do it, uh, right? That's that rebellion. So because of the stubborn and rebellion, rebelliousness, you're, you're a glutton. And you're a drunkard, right? You won't stop filling yourself with the things that you want, yeah. right? You won't stop filling it. Rather, even if you're told not to do it, whatever, you're going to keep filling yourself up with those things, right? And, and, and so I, I like to ask, is this you and the Father? Proverbs 1, 8, 9. Proverbs 1, 8, 9. Uh, this is a verse I like to use a lot. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We don't have to keep his commandments to be saved, yeah. but we need to keep his commandments to be filled with the Holy yeah, Spirit, yeah. to be in fellowship with him. And you know what? I think this verse talks about that because who was the law given unto? Jerusalem. What is Jerusalem? The mother of us all. That's not a mother God up in heaven. That's our mother land, brethren. That's our mother land. Look what the Bible says here. My son, uh, Proverbs 1, 8. Proverbs 1, 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. What? And forsake not the law of thy mother. Woo! Woo! Rob, you're hitting something there. I don't know. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head. Whoa, grace in your head? Huh. And chains about thy neck. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like uh, Romans 12, right? The renewing of your mind, right? That ornament of grace. You know what ornament means? It's an adding. It's an adding, right? Putting up little, little ornaments of grace, Gracing that mind, renewing it. What about the next one? Chains about thy neck. That's putting that body of yours in subjection. This spinal cord runs down the whole shebang, brethren. You get that spine in subjection, you might just get the whole thing, right? That, I mean, that, it's, it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting to me. Like I said, it reminds me of those two things. Okay, so let's move to the spirit. Exodus 28.3. Exodus 28.3. Exodus chapter 28. And we're going to look at verse 3. So, um, Lord willing, we'll, we'll, we'll go through this again and we'll go through obedient. There's a, some real good stuff about the word obedient, but I chose to just stay with obedience this time. Since those were the, that's the word specifically that top, popped up with this topic. So, 28.3, uh, Exodus 28.3, the Bible says, um, And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So who, who are the type of people who are drunk with the Spirit? Well, here it says what? The wise-hearted, 
The wise hearted. That's the first type of person. Okay, well, what does that go back to? What did we just get out of? Proverbs, right? The Proverbs. Are you doing your Proverb day, right? Very basic stuff, right? You're not getting any Bible, at least get the Proverb. You know what I mean? Like, at least get the Proverb, right? Getting the wisdom, right? Do you ask God to give you wisdom, brethren? Do you ask of Him who giveth liberally? Then you get here in Exodus 31. Exodus 31. Exodus 31. We're going to run through a lot of verses, but I want you to see them, brethren. Um, right? That, that's the difference. The teaching, this is for you to get this in your... You know, the, the preaching, we're trying to poke you. We're trying to convict you to do something. But here, I want, to, I want you to get more familiar with the Scriptures, brethren. Exodus 31. And the reason it's twice there is because this is uh, something that's... Com uh, that, that's said twice by the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you know, through the Spirit. So what does it say here? Uh, Exodus 31, we'll start at verse 1 for context. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name uh, Beziel, Basilio, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, what, in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Okay, so another, another thing about this, this person who's filled with, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, what do they have? They have, they have uh, wisdom, understanding, knowledge of all, uh, of all manners of workmanship, right? You know how to get to work, right? You know how to keep yourself busy. You know how to get some of these things done, right? Right? That, and, 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 and that's being wise as well, right? Um, I forget the verse specifically, but in Proverbs it says that, um, that the prudent look on. They, see, they look on and they see destruction coming and they hide themselves. But the simple uh, pass on and are destroyed. Right? You have to be wise to see what's coming. I mean, brethren, you, I mean, look at the times. Look what's going on in the world. If there was ever a time to get right and be sold out and look like a fool, it's right about now, you know? It's right about now, brethren. It's, it, you're pushing the time. What's next? Uh, and remember, it says it twice. It says it twice there, brethren. So uh, maybe you'll get that double, that double wisdom, double knowledge, double ability to work. I mean, I mean, people were like, oh, brother, you're encouraging. Then we got Brother Jonathan, and he's more encouraging than me. Man, he encourages me. You know what I mean? That's that double, that double portion, brethren. That, man, that encourages me. Okay, what else we get here? Uh, Luke 2.40. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. Luke 2 and verse 40. What about this one? So who's this? this one's talking about having the grace of God. That's another thing, right? You want, you, want to have a, you want to get a little more grace from the Lord? Maybe you should be a little more filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe you should try to sell out a little bit more for Him. Uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. The Bible says, uh, And the child grew and waxed strong in the Spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. And this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here, but still, I'm going to apply it. as a Christian, as a little Christ, right? As you grow, right? As you begin to be more yielded to the Holy Spirit, what? You can, you can grow in the grace of God as well. Yeah. Woo, that's good. Amen. That's good, right? Okay, where sin abound, grace does much more abound, right? That stuff got to grow, brethren. That, I mean, I wonder if that's talking about, you know, like you go out and sin, and then you know what? You get right with the Lord, and you know what? Now I know. You know what? If I commit that dirty thing again, man, the Lord's got me through it once. Man, the grace grew that much more, because before that, I was kind of wondering, you know? Man, I wonder. I don't know. I'm just, that just popped in my head. Okay, what about next? Uh, Acts 2.40. Acts 2.4. Acts 2.4. That's we're almost there. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Okay, just about time. Uh, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You remember here that, that when people saw this, they thought they were drunk. Yeah. Right? Right? When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to have such a zeal for souls, you're going to just let it loose. Man, I look like a fool right now. I'm speaking Chinese in Jerusalem. But you know what? I'm going to do it. Right? Amen. Woo! You know, think about it. You know what I mean? They're speaking Korean in Jerusalem. They're speaking Espanol in Jerusalem. They, you know what I mean? That's some foolish stuff. But when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to get out there and you're going to get you're going to get after souls. You're going to get after souls, brethren. For time's sake, we're not going to go through these next ones. But I know, this next one will be First Peter 414. Feel free to write this down. First Peter 414. That here talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be despised by the world. Uh, last here, you'll see um, in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, you'll see that uh, you'll be able to fight against the flesh with spiritual weapons. The more you get filled, right? 
you get a little bit more uh, proficient with that weapon. So what does this boil down to? The, the, the drunkard on liquor. The drunkard on, I, I, I thought this was kind of nice, I heard this somewhere. The, 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 the juice of the fruit of the self. Right? What is he drunk on? He's drunk on what he wants. He, what he wants. Yeah. He's drunk on his own lust. On, his own, on the sin in his mind, laying wait, ready to catch, catch him. Right? But what is, it, what is the spiritual person, what, what, what's he obeying? He's obeying the words of God. You see this? Look how much scripture we had to run through versus this guy. You know what I mean? Look at double mentions and stuff. This guy's obeying the words of God. He's not obeying the, the feelings, the flesh, the emotions. I don't want to look dumb. The world's despising me. I'm going to stop doing this. He's not obeying any of that. He's obeying what the word of God has told him to do and has already prefaced him for. What else can we continue on with, okay? How does the drunk live? How does the drunk live? Well, on liquor, you'll see here, well, let's go to Ephesians 5. Go back to Ephesians 5. That way I can show you what, what I'm looking at here. Ephesians 5. So here we're going to go through the whole context of that passage, Ephesians 5. Um, we'll start here at Ephesians 5, and we'll look, we'll look at verse 1, and we'll try to set this up, brethren. Um, so and feel free to stop me if I'm going too fast, if you're not quite understanding, okay? So be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, Ephesians 5, verse 1. Verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Man, right? Verse 3, yeah, amen, brother. Verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness and all covetousness, let it not be named once among, uh, among you as become as saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Right? And then we'll, we'll jump here to uh, verse 19. So here's the other side of this. So after it tells you to feel, be filled with the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit, what does it say next? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So I want to compare these two sides, right? Because it says, be not drunk with uh, wine wherein is excess. So uh, these things are excessive, rather in fornication, uncleanness, covet. These things are un a a a very excessive. So I want to compare these things as the drunk versus these things with how the spiritual man lives. So first, how will the drunk live? The, the drunk will live in fornication, in all uncleanness, and in covetousness. Brethren, I want to tell you this. The, the Bible uses fornication with, with what you taste, with what you put in your mouth, maybe with what even comes out of your mouth. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so on the other side of that, on the other side of that, well, what do they use their body and their mouth for here, the spiritual person? Well, he's going to speak. He's going to speak, right? right? And I want to encourage you, brethren, if you can't, if you can't sing, speak those hymns. Yeah. Speak those hymns. Just say them. Goodness gracious, just say the words. Brother Jesse, I'll never forget his testimony when he was, when he was sing, uh, singing those hymns the first time. Had to hide his face. Hey, brother, you're not alone. Amen. You're not alone, bless God. Once I started actually reading those verses, man, i got to say I'm a worm. Man, no wonder the new versions change that out, right? A sinner like me? No, I'm a worm. Yeah. I'm a worm. I'm a worm, right? So you can't, you can't sing? Well, speak. All right. You can sing a little bit? Then, then make the melody. Hum. Yeah. Hum at least. Get a little involved. Yeah. Shake around a little bit. You know what I mean? Make some melody, right? Make some melody. If you could, if you, Danielle Chopin, boom, sing. All right, boom, I like it. Sing. Hey, right, Sister Kirsten, she can sing. Sit next to her. She can sing. Right? Boom! Right? The singers sing. That's what, that's what the Spirit is doing over here. It's a mandatory fun, brethren. It's mandatory fun. Voluntold. Get up here and sing. Get up here and shout. Take your shoe off. Throw it. You know what I mean? It's a command to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happens right after he commands you to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Read it again, brethren. Verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. There's no excuse for you to not be singing these hymns, brethren. Come on. There's no excuse. You wonder why you're not having fun in this Christian life. You're not having fun when the rest of us are having fun. Look at the other Christians. Aren't they having fun when they're singing? Man, why do you think we're encouraged? We're encouraging ourselves. Come on. Get to it, man. 
Goodness gracious. Okay, what happens, what happens next? What is this guy doing over here? Filthiness, right? Foolish talking and jesting, okay? But before I go into those three, what's the key? What does it say? Because we got some jokers in here, right? We got some jokers in here. I'm not going to point any fingers, right? We got some jokers in here. So what, so what does that mean? All right, uh, verse 4, verse 4, <laughs> Ephesians 5, 4. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, but here's the key, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks, right? It's not convenient for you to be making fun of, uh, making fun and joking when someone's, you know, someone's family member just died, you know what I mean? When someone's coming to you for spiritual advice, you know what I mean? When someone's really struggling and asking for prayer, that's not the time to make a joke at them, brethren. It's not convenient. It's not convenient for them, right? Okay, and, and we have biblical proof of that. Filthiness, but Paul said dung, right? Uh, Malachi 3, one of my favorite verses. I'm going to take the, the dung of uh, after your solemn feast and rub it on your face. You know what I mean? Is the Lord filthy for doing that? No. No, he did it righteously, right? Because he was mad at, at righteous things, right? Yeah. Foolish talking, but, but you answer a fool according to their folly, mm -hmm. right? So there's a balance of this. Jesting, but a well-timed joke can sharpen the countenance of your brother. Man, tell me it hasn't. You know what I mean? You're having a bad day and Brother Randall comes in with a joke. Brother Sean says some funny little pun. And it, huh, it makes your Wednesday night better, brethren. It makes your Wednesday night brethren. But, uh, so, so what's the key? Not convenient. That's the key there, right? That's the key there. So what about the other side? What about the spiritual man? What, what, what is he doing here? Well, what, how does that verse end there, verse 5-4? But rather giving of thanks. So it seems like filthy, uh, filthy talking, foolish talking, jesting, and all these, these things are opposite of being thankful. I don't understand that fully, but it's interesting. I mean... If you're, not, if you're doing these three things, maybe you need to, maybe you need to try to get at the root of, uh, are you thankful? Maybe, maybe that's, because these are hard things to tackle. Maybe the Lord's like, don't even play with the, with, the, with the rose petals. Get straight to the root, you know? Verse, uh, so on the other side, being thankful for all things, brethren, all things. Verse 20, it says, uh, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you. We know the verse in, um, in, in Romans 5, right? Tribulation, patience, patience, experience, experience, hope, right? Boom. So the trials, what? It's an, uh, trials are an opportunity for you to be rewarded. What, what about suffering? Suffering proves that you're worthy yeah. to be counted. You're, you're worthy to suffer like Jesus Christ, right? Are you, are you worthy to drink on my cup? Yeah, we're worthy. Okay, yeah, you're worthy. You are going to be killed, but you're not worthy to sit on my right hand. You know, right and left hands, right? But you're worthy for the suffering. You're worthy for the suffering. Don't be so mad about it. These are, boom, reward time, baby. Praise the Lord. And not only that, but, but, but what else does it say there? Um, and all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you got to do these things decently and in order, right? You got to do these things. In this is the way you should be praying. You pray to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? You do these things in order, right? Not, not, as, not as, right, what, what's the comparison there? What am I talking about? The first Corinthians chapter 14, remember? Where, where he's talking about where, um, where, where unbelievers come into the church and they'll see speaking with tongues, all the madness, right? And they'll say, oh man, isn't this madness? You know what I mean? Like, right? Isn't that like a drunk? Isn't that like a party of drunks, right? That's, that's, that's what I always thought about there. You come in and everybody's all drunk, blab blabbering everywhere. It's n nothing's decently in order. But here, things are be decent in order. Or even the filthiness and the foolish talking and the jesting. These things, it, it gets wild. It gets wild. People talking all crazy. A lot of this stuff isn't in order. But, but with the spiritual man, he's going to do all things decently in order. He's going to pray. He's going to pray how the Bible tells him to do it. And uh, John 14, we'll go here to John 14. Many of us know this verse, but uh, still, still a good verse to continue to come back to. John 14. Um, and this is kind of what I'm showing you here. There is a way to pray. Um, John 14, and we'll look here at verse 13. This is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ talking to his disciples. You'll see that there's two times, right, the Lord tells them to pray. Here he's talking to um, the disciples, and he's not talking about the Lord's prayer. He's talking about us more so, right? So verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, right? Um, right, and we could even go further there. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, 
that He may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the Lord cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him, but ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. You see the connection there with obedience, with the Spirit, right? You see all the connections there with what we're talking about, right? And, and, and once again, decently in order. There's a way to do the thing, right? There's a way to do the thing. Okay, what's next here? Um, so I didn't write this part down, but uh, verse 5. So Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 5, we'll look at verse 5. So feel free to go back to the main text. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and verse 5. We're doing pretty good, brethren. I'll probably only be a few minutes over. Boom, praise the Lord. Um, Ephesians 5, and we're going to look here at verse 5. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man with an, uh, who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Okay, so, so what about this? Okay, so you get the whoremonger, right? So verse 5, you get someone who takes advantage of others, right? Why? Right, what about the unclean person? Unclean person. The unclean person is what? He, t he takes advantage of things, right? Where are you getting this from? Taking advantage of people. Proverbs 5. The woman who goes out and she catches the young man. The unclean person. Achan. And the Babylonian garment. Got his whole family killed. Gone. What else? A covetous man who is an idolater. Woo! Man. And you know what, brethren? Bless God that when you got saved, you can't be these things. Okay, brethren, let me just preface this. You can't be these things. You can't be a liar. You can't be a, a covet. You, you can't be these things because you're covered in the, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you can commit these sins. You know what I mean? Right? In God's eyes, you're already holy and perfect and all of that, right? But you can still commit these sins, okay? Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, covetous man. Well, this, this, guy's, this guy's taking advantage of people so he can take their things. Woo-hoo-hoo, man. Where did we get that from? We get that from Ahab and Naboth's vinegar, vin, uh, vineyard. Naboth's vin vinegar. <laughs> yeah, someone drinking some vinegar there. Um, and then I'll give you the verses there. Proverbs 5 for this one, the woman. And then this is... Uh, Joshua 7. And then this is 1 Kings 21. Boom. For your notes there. Um, boom. Okay. So, so what, what about this, right? Uh, they're, ultimately, what is all of this, right? All of this, they're submitting to their own desires. Boom. And do you see how this keeps popping up, brethren? I mean, we're going in circles here both times, but it's, it has a lot to do with your obedience. Yeah. Right? When you got saved, at the moment of salvation, God gives you the Holy Spirit. Right? But after that moment, your amount of filling of the Holy Spirit is based on your obedience. That's right. That's right. right? God's not going to do the work from then on. Right? Right? I mean, he'll continue to do the good work in you, but what's that good work? To save your soul. Yeah. To, to take you out of here at the rapture. Right? right? That's the good work he's going to continue to do in you. But you know what? You're going to have to work to get up and read your Bible earlier. You're going to have to get, uh, work to, to get up and seek him before the sun comes up and, 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 and to get out and pass tracks and to be a good testimony at work and to love your wife and to submit to your husband. You're gonna, it's going to work. It's going to be some work, brethren. Yeah. It's going to be a whole lot of work. And what, what, what's the contrary to this? Verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. You're going to submit to the people. Why? Because you fear the Lord. I mean, do you not believe what the book says? That Do you not believe I got the Holy Spirit in me? Do you not believe Brother Randall got the Holy Spirit in, me? in him? Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your kids, if they're saved, they got the Holy Spirit in them. You know what I mean? Woo! Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine, be, imagine beating your kid out of, out of anger and you're getting up there and the Lord says, hey, I was in that boy. Well, what's up with that? Huh? Do you not take the book seriously? Submitting yourselves one to another. Don't let the kids run you. Come on, we already know. We already know the other way of it, but you know what I mean? Like, submitting yourselves 
to the bre- I mean, to even the brethren who don't know much when they get in the church. Yeah. You know what? I- submit to them, serve them, yeah. help them grow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wash their feet when they come in. Not physically wash their feet, but you know what I mean? Like sit with them, talk with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let let them get the word, the world out of their mouth. And, and just take a little bit of the world because they're going to come in with a little bit in their mouth and let, it get, let them get it out to you so that maybe they don't get it to someone else. Be that shield for your brother and sister. Uh, how, about a, how does a drunk die? How does a drunk die? Let's, let's try to... Woo! Bam! Does this thing spin? Oh, it don't spin. Okay. We're, we're going to do this right here on the bottom. Let's try to do this. Okay. How does a drunk die? How does a drunk die? How does he die? Let's go to uh, Proverbs 23. Get Proverbs 23 in one hand and Matthew 3 in the other hand, please. Boom. So if you've been living like a drunk, if you've been living and if you keep feeling these things hitting you, then I'm going to show you where you might be in and up, brethren. You're not going to lose your salvation, but there's some things you could lose. Yeah. On this side, on the liquor side, on the fruit of, or the juice of the fruit of the self. Proverbs, mm, Proverbs 23, verse 21. Um, t- 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 the Bible says, where are you at? Uh, For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. And drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags, right? If you can't control what you're putting in your body, you're going to come to po- poverty and drowsiness. What, are you, what is the poverty you're talking about? Okay, I'm talking about, yeah, you could actually end up homeless. Yeah, you can actually end up on the street, right? right? You can actually end up uh, sleeping your white life away because you're not satisfied. Because you're, you, you didn't get out and you don't feel successful and you're just going to wallow in your, own, in your own pity. Boom. Okay, we got that one out of the way. But what's more, what's more detrimental to us? The poverty. What about poverty in heaven because you didn't get any rewards, right? Right. What if you lost that 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 corruptible inheritance, right? Because of your own works, what, uh, you come to poverty there. What about drowsiness? The Webster's 1828 uh, word for drowsiness is idleness and sluggishness, like that slug inactivity, right? Right, you start you, you start putting bad things in your body, not care, uh, being careful about what you're not being dig- diligent about what you're putting in your body. Boom, you're gonna stop working for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're gonna have a harder time working for Him. You're gonna be more tired. You're gonna you're, you you know you're not gonna maybe even see the reward in it. That's that's scary. That's scary. What about the other side of it? Matthew three. We we kind of started there. Matthew three. Uh, Jesus was obedient, and what happens? Uh, then the Holy Spirit descends upon him. Right. Um, uh, and then what, what happens next, right? Uh, 4.1, right? The, uh, what happens? The Holy Spirit leads the Lord Jesus Christ where? Into the wilderness. Why? Verse, verse 4, uh, or chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Spirit took him out there into the wilderness. Oh, man, to dry places. What? what? To be tempted of the devil. Woo, you get filled up with the Holy Spirit. You know what? You're going to go out and you're going to try to die gloriously. You're going to try to die in battle. Man, like them Vikings getting out there going to Valhalla. Man, we know they were going to hell, but you could really get out there and you could really go to somewhere. You know what I mean? You could really die on the battlefield for, out, there, out there witnessing for Christ. I mean, you, you want to read a good book? Go, go read Peace Child. Brother, um, Brother Seselchek had told me about it, about going and witnessing to the cannibals. And, and, and oh, man, brother, and that stuff. Or what about those, those other brothers, right, who, who went out to those uh, other cannibals as well, right? Got, got killed by, like, arrows and stuff uh, when they were approaching the island. What happens next? The, next? the next group, they were allowed in. You know what I mean? Getting out there, getting out there for them, trying to die on the battlefield, right? Uh, and, and, and brethren, this isn't, this isn't just something that's for the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to 1 Samuel. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 11. Getting filled with the Holy Spirit and led into battle is not something that's just reserved for the, for the uh, Lord Jesus Christ, but it's even reserved for somebody that's, down, that's bound to lose the Holy Spirit. Woo! What are you talking about there? It, we're talking about Saul. We're talking about Saul. Some, somebody who had the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit left him. Bless God that the Holy Spirit's sealed within you and we can't lose him. But you know what? You can lose a filling. Woo! You can leak it, right? You leaky Christians. You got a hole somewhere, right? Leaky. 
leaky. Uh, 1 Samuel 11, verse 1 to 2, we're going to look here. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered this, uh, answered them, And this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all of your right eyes, and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. Verse 4, Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul, and told, excuse me, the tidings in the ear of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd of the field, out of the field. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was, great, was kindled greatly. You see that? The Spirit of God came, what came with it? Anger. That's interesting. Verse 7, And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them through all the lands, uh, all the coasts of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell, upon, uh, fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. You see what happens there, right? When the Holy Spirit can fall upon you, it can lead you into battle, and it can lead you into chopping some things up. It can lead you into some anger, right, against the enemy, right, brethren? That this is something that could get for you, right? If you're having trouble defeating things in your life, spiritual warfare, you know what? You need, to, you need the filling power. You need the filling power, right? In, in my infirmities, why, why do we glory in our infirmities, right? That the power of Christ may rest upon us, brethren, right? That's that power, the Holy Spirit power, right? What's our connection with Christ while we're here? It's this book, and it's the Holy Spirit inside of us, brethren, those are the two things you need to get close to, that you need to get filled up with. You need to get this book in there, right in there, in there, in the heart, right? And the Holy Spirit filled all the way up, all the way up, brethren, all the way up. What, oh, what's next? Verse 34, verse 34, you'll never, uh, um, is that, man? Okay, I think that's Ephesians 5, I think it's Ephesians 5, let me see this. My apologies, brother, I didn't put the reference here. Boom. Never have peace. Five. That is not. That is not that. Okay, let me see this. Uh, well, either way, um, for a for a drunk person, what 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 are they never gonna have? Oh, Proverbs twenty three thirty four. I remember now. My apologies, brother. Proverbs twenty three thirty four. That's why I put in, been put the reference. And we're gonna talk about. I've always wondered about this guy, the guy who's who's on the ship. Remember when he's talking about the drunk guy? Let me just go there. You guys don't read your Bible. Verse, uh, chapter, uh, Proverbs 23, verse 34. Um, Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of the mast. This whole, this whole passage is talking about a drunkard, right? We'll go back to verse, um, verse 27. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She that li she lieth in wait. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Verse 29. Who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath babbling, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, as it, as the at the last it biteth like a serpent, and singeth like an adder. Thine eye shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Verse 34, we're back here again. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that, that lieth upon the top of a mast. I've been trying to get something out of this. You know what I got out of this? You're not going to have any rest when you're up there on top of the mast. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Oh, Lord. You know what I mean? You're not going to have any rest up there. You're not going to have any peace up there at all when you're on top of the ship, on top of the... Think about it. That, that's the top of the boat. Maybe you're all right down here, but we're all right down here because we got that thing flailing around up there, right? Right? Or the guy that's in the midst of the ocean taking a nap on his bed. You know what I mean? 50-foot wave, knock you over, flip you over, right? You're not going to get any rest there, right? And verse uh, to Deuteronomy 29, let's go to Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29. Rob, you're, Rob, you're being weird. Yeah, but I think, I think it's because I think it's because the Bible also points there, guys. Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 18. The Bible says... Um, Deuteronomy 29, verse 18, the Bible says here, Lest there should be among you 
man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him. But the anger of the Lord and his jealousy will smoke against, shall smoke against that man. Man, that's scary. Imagine that. The jealousy of the Lord's gonna get some, it's gonna smoke on you. Like when you put the magnifying glass over some ants, right, with the sun. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? He's a little bit of smoke coming off him. Woo! Jealousy like a consuming fire. Woo! And all the curses that are uh, written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. At least we don't get that, brethren. At least we're secured in the book of, uh, of the book of life, right? At least we don't got to worry about losing our salvation. Okay, you got that one. You got that one solved. People say, "Man, why do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit?" Man, brethren, he sa he saved you. He made he he made you a son. He gave you a cr uh, incorruptible inheritance. He gave you even. A, just like we were talking about, Pastor, he gave you an uh, inheritance you could run towards. He gave you a goal. You know what? When you meet old men who, who are retired and who don't have anything in their life, they're going to tell you about what they used to do. They're going to tell you about their past accomplishments. But you find a man who loves his wife, who loves the Lord, who loves, who loves even just his, his success, who loves the goal, who loves getting up in the morning and going towards a goal. You know what he's going to tell you about? He's going to tell you about his goals. He's going to tell you about the things him and his wife are going to go do. He's going to tell you about, you know what I mean? He's going to be excited for tomorrow, right? But the man alone, right, not satisfied with success, he's going he's gonna to turn back on himself and turn back and he's look at the past and say, look at those things I once did. Look how I once ran. Look how I once threw shoes. You know what I mean? Interesting. So, uh, so okay, let's go, let's, let's, let's go here. I'm running out of time. Matthew 11. Let's go to uh, Matthew 11. What's the other side of this? Matthew 11. Matthew 11 um, and verse, we, we all know this, right? Uh, uh, the Lord said, right, come because right, his, 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 his yoke is easy and his burden is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. So go instead to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's what I wanted to get there. Well, what, what's the yoke? What's the burden, right? What's the yoke? What's the burden? Well, I mean, first, Acts chapter 15, we know that what that, that burden is, right? That yoke, that's, that's what we have to do, right? That, that we, don't, we don't have to follow the whole law, right? We're not bound by the law, right? But we're bound by what the, what the Holy Spirit convicts us to do, right? And, what, and it, I bet you if you listen to what the Holy Spirit's convicting you to do, he'll want to come in and hang out with you a little more. Boom. Whoa. Look at We're figuring things out. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 10. I don't mean to talk to you like you're stupid, brethren, but I'm stupid and I need to be talked to like I'm stupid sometimes. Okay. For, uh, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians 10, verse 13. The Bible says there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Right. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be, yet ye may be able to bear it. OK, so what is this saying? The Holy Spirit's going to help you in your trials so that you'll never be tempted above that you're able. So what? In your moderation, you'll find rest and peace and power. In the Holy Spirit, right? Where are you getting that from? Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, verses 5 through 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. I'll read it for time's sake. Philippians 4, 5 through 7. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right? Yeah. Right? So, interesting there, okay? Pretty interesting there, right? You want more peace, right? Get more of the Holy Spirit. How do you get more of the Holy Spirit? Your moderation. Boom. You see how we keep getting back there? Obedience. Holy Spirit filling. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. Yeah. Can't even hold nothing else. Hand in hand. <laughs> Brethren, okay. What about, what about next? Ephesians 5. Let's go back to Ephesians 5. We're just about done. Get Ephesians 5 in one hand and Deuteronomy 29 again. Should have had you stay there. Ooh. All right. Deuteronomy 29 and Ephesians 5. We're just about done. Thank you so much for your patience, brethren. Um, I'm only four minutes over. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, all right, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 29. Okay, we're just about wrapping this up. Deuteronomy 29, I just want you to see here uh, the connection again with obedience and with an inheritance, right? Because uh, you can lose a portion of your inheritance, as I mentioned earlier, right? Um, and so this is talking about the, uh, uh, the Jews here, but let's see here what it has here for us. Deuteronomy 29, verse 5. Deuteronomy 29, verse 5, the Bible says, And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and thy shoes, thy shoe is not waxen old upon your foot. Ye shall, ye have not eaten bread, nor have drunk wine or strong drink. That's interesting. That ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Huh. Right? Where else do we see that, right? That man, right, should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Right? You see, uh, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there is a connection with the bread and, right, w with the bread and the drink and the Holy Spirit and filling and God's fellowship. Very, very interesting. Verse 7. And when ye came unto this place, Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us to battle, and we smote them. Right? You get victory. What happens? And we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Keep, therefore, the words of this covenant, and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Right? So this is Old Testament, so maybe it's a little jumbled here, but you see the connections here. You see, you see obedience. Right, you see with uh, you see with salvation from the Lord, right? Victory from the Lord, and you see you see what you see uh, uh, what obedience again. Keep therefore these words, right? You see it all connected there. Well, us us Christians, we have that inheritance, right? Because think about this. Although it says here that they got the inheritance, what do we know? We know they didn't drive out the inhabitants of all the lands, right? So they didn't get their full inheritance. They only got a portion of their inheritance there. They won't get the remainder of their inheritance until the Lord Jesus Christ comes down and secures it for them at Armageddon, right? But until then, they only have the portion of the inheritance. Well, I want to stop you from only getting that portion, brethren. I want to help you get that full. How do you get the full, brethren? How do you get the full? So, uh, let, let's go to, let's go to um, 2 John 1. 2 John 1. 2 John 1. God bless our pastor because I don't know how he preaches, teaches, dwells on the whiteboard and all of that. I haven't touched this thing for a minute now. <laughs> you know, God bless him. Um, 1 John, or 2 John, chapter 2. 2 John. Did I write that down? I don't think I wrote that down. Hold on, give me a second. Give me a minute. Yeah, because there ain't no chapter 2 in John. So let me see, what did I write down here? Uh, give me, yeah, no, I think for walk... The second epistle of John. Come on, bro. That's what I meant. What am I talking about, brother? Okay, 2 John 1, 6. 2 John 1, 6. Right? What does the Bible say? And this is love that we walk after his commandments, that this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the be uh, beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are now entered into the world who confess not that uh, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward, right? Whosoever transgresseth and not abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any of you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not in your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds, right? So this is, this is a tribulation uh, passage, right? Some of that stuff probably more so applies to the tribulation. But what can we get out of this? We can get out of this that we can lose our full reward by what? By getting in to false doctrine and by what by being partakers of evil deeds right that's how we cannot get a full reward brethren it's that simple it's your obedience we got we we got there we left we came back we went over again we came we went to her mom's house we came back again and obedience and spirit are still hanging out all right that's exactly what we got to do we got to be obedient to the lord jesus christ to get that full reward brethren and uh, i just want to leave you with this last thing what, what, what does the book of Psalms encourage? What is, what is the most spiritual man in the whole Bible? How does he encourage us? Uh, go to Psalms chapter 4, verse 5. Psalms chapter 4, verse 5. Maybe, maybe, no, I still think David was the most spiritual man, honest, personally. I could be wrong, but personally, I think he's the most spiritual man in the Bible. Right? Because even, even when, when Paul was getting smacked, he said, oh, that whitest, the, that whited wall. You know what I mean? Even he, even he reviled back. You know what I mean? He was like, no, so you're not going to slap me. You know what I mean? Like, you know? But, but, but David, right, he got a chance to get back at Saul, and he said, nah, I'm, I'm not going to do it, you know? I'm not going to do it. Um, Psalms chapter 4. Psalms chapter 4. 
Psalms chapter 4, and the Bible says, verse 5, Psalms chapter 4, verse 5, Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. As that old hymn goes, brethren, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That's exactly what he told us here. So I uh, hope you got a little bit of something out of it, brethren. That's, that's all I got for you. Um, I hope it was clear, and I'll go ahead and close this out in prayer here. Uh, dear Lord Jesus Christ, um, I pray, Father, that uh, pray that um, this message was well received, Lord. I pray, Father, that uh, you would just uh, bless the hearers of it, Lord, and, and um, have us all to uh, maybe have got something, Lord. And if there was anything I was unclear about, Father, that uh, you would stir up the hearts of the brethren here, Father, to, um, to be as the, the Bereans, Lord, and go and search those things out, whether they're so, um, to go and, and, and study this, these scriptures, Lord, and... and um, Make this teaching their own, Father. I pray, Lord, for um, the Holy Spirit filling power for each and every uh, individual here, Lord, for all that uh, watch online, Lord. I pray, Father, that you'll help us um, to have a stronger desire to be filled more with your Spirit, Father, to walk after your Spirit, Lord, to um, have greater fellowship with your Spirit, Father, and um, thereby have greater fellowship one with another, Lord. Um, may you get all the glory, and, and please, Lord, uh, bless Brother Daniel Price, Father. Prepare him now, Lord, to uh, convict our hearts, Father, and give us something from you, Lord. And, um, we just we just thank you so much for being here with us today, Lord, and uh, may you keep being here and keep getting praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.